Let me tell you where the gangsters end up. Unfortunately, that's one place I can tell you about. They end up in a six by seven little box. And in it lies a bed with a mattress half the size of the one that you probably sleep on now. And if you're a nice rich man, then it's probably a quarter of your mattress. There's a toilet in there. And every morning when he brushes his teeth, he looks into the reflection that he receives from some silver paint that was left on a piece of wood. He's not even allowed to keep his toothbrush or his teeth in his own room, in his cell. He has to leave that outside. When he runs out of toilet roll, he has to wait and put an application in to get another toilet roll. Okay, when he feels hungry, he hasn't got a microwave or a fridge to open. He opens a can of tuna, puts a bit of pickle in it, puts it in a bread and eats it. This is the paradise that every gangster gets. And that is the paradise that Allah keeps for people like that. You want to be a gangster, or you aspire to be like one, or you think they're cool and they're big and they're bad. Wallahi, come with me, I'll show you how much of a gangster they are now. You know, once people go behind bars, it's all over. That's 10 years of, of certain people's lives. That's 15 years of people's lives, gone in a flash. And there's nothing he can do about it. Nothing at all. And you think about it. As a gangster, what did he achieve? Yeah, he had a strap of a gun around him somewhere. He popped a few pills, maybe here and there, snorted and smoked. What else did he do with his life? So what has he done? He's messed his own life up. He's living in a seven by six. Honestly, I tell you, if I do this in a cell, literally this, I can touch both walls with my hands. And that's without even stretching them properly. That's the type of area that they have. I'm asking you, is this what people want to achieve in life? Is that even a goal? What's wrong with you and me? What's wrong with our society? You know, every time these things happen, you know what we blame? We blame, we blame society. We say that it was society's fault. A group of brothers were in front of me and they said, Imam Sab, you know what? It's society. I said, it's not society. Society doesn't force you to do things. Allah gives you and me a choice. Every time you do something, Allah gives you a choice. And it is up to you to do it or to leave it. When you came to the masjid today, did society tell you to come to the masjid? When you go to school for education, does society tell you you've got to go there? When you go to university, does society tell you go to university? Of course it doesn't. It's your choice. When you pick up that cigarette and you put it in your mouth and you're about to drag it, has society said you've got to smoke? Society never said you should smoke. That is your choice. When you pick up a gun and you're about to shoot somebody, it's in your hands. What part of society tells you to shoot somebody? Allah gives you and me that choice. And our problem is, we look for an excuse to blame somebody else. If it's not society, you blame your parents. If it's not your parents, you blame your friends. And let me tell you, when it comes to your friends, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran clearly, He says, People on the day of judgment will come in front of Allah and they will say, Ya waylata laytani lam attakhid fulanan khalila, laqad adallani ani dikri ba'da id jaani, wa kana shaytan lil insani khadula. That, oh Allah, woo be unto me that I took this person as my friend, as my khalil. For he made me forget about the message that you had sent. And what message are we talking about? We're talking about the Quran. These people will come in front of Allah and they'll have no excuse. And you, and you ask a person about their friends and their boys today, people are ready to die for these people. Go and sit in prison for a week and see how many of your boys come to visit you. Go fight a, cake, a you know, court case and see who comes to pay for it. Your friends are your friends, they're never more than that. It's clear, it's clear. Hazrat Umar says, 
الرجل على دينه خليلي فلينظر أحدكم من يخالله that a man is upon the way of his friend a man is upon the way of his friend so be careful whenever one of you choose your friends and nowadays what is it? it's all about the boys it's all about the boys ask the youngsters it's all about the boys and the gangs and you know oh he's one of my boys yeah he's one of your boys like I said go and sit in prison and have a look how many of your boys come to visit you I had a brother from around this area actually he was a revert to this deen and he came to me on one Eid and he was upset he goes I can't believe because this is my second time in prison and he goes you know what they couldn't even send me an Eid card boys boys these were his boys they didn't have that much inside them to send him an Eid card and we were ready to die for these people we sacrifice everything for these people to such an extent, we sacrifice our parents for these guys. You and me, we do this all the time. You know what? Your mom might ask you to do something. You're like, you know what? Mom, I'm busy. I'm with the ex, you know, I'm with uh, whoever in Muhammad. Or I'm going out with somebody. I'm going here. Or mom, I've got plans. And you're ready to go with your boys. You're ready to leave with your boys. This is the life that we live. I asked those same people. I said, guys, where are your boys? They're like, we don't have any boys. And you know what they said to me? They said, the only people that supported us through our sentence was our parents. Subhanallah. The only people. So it was that same old man who you used to hate. The man you had no time for. That came to your court cases. That paid for your legal stuff. That came and supported you. That sent you postal orders when you didn't have a penny to your name. And you think about your friends. Who are these people? Who are these people?